Raise your hand if you would consider yourself an entrepreneur. Good, 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 okay. So, as you already know, every idea begins with an impulse. And for my company, Mixmade, that impulse began with a question. On day one, our question was, is it possible to create a business completely from scratch in 30 days? My friend Morgan and I had bonded a few years earlier over a shared love of whiskey and pizza. So he came, <laughs> yeah, he came to my apartment one night in Bushwick. We sat at my kitchen table. We cracked open a bottle. We finished a whole pie. And we got to work on answering that question. We thought the easiest deliverable in 30 days was going to be a condiment. And I had been making my own hot sauce for a few years. But when we really looked at the hot sauce market, we saw it's pretty crowded and, more to the point, a little bit boring. So here's an opportunity for us to really think about what spicy could be, but more to the point, what could be spicy. And we came up with these dual ideas of spicy honey and spicy maple syrup. And we were so psyched at this idea of selling this packaged duo of two products. And that led us to lesson one, simplify. <laughs> we pitched that idea to a friend, and he immediately shot back, simplify. And in retrospect, that was the best piece of advice we got in those early days. And it's something I still carry with me. Get to the root of your idea and simplify. Don't do two products if one product can stand by itself. So we decided to go with spicy honey for a couple of reasons. Um, it was already on the market. There were some brands floating around, but no one had really claimed the category in the way of like a ketchup or a sriracha or something like that. But it's approachable, it's familiar. Everybody has tasted honey, they know what honey is, and the leap from honey to spicy honey is not that difficult for someone to conceptualize. It's easy to make, and because these early stages of development and testing would all be done in my tiny little Bushwick kitchen, we needed something that was going to have an ease of process. And then most importantly, we could see the profit margin right away in the product. One bottle of honey would fund a few more, and those would fund a few more, on and on. So we could see the scalability of the product right away. Which led us to our next lesson, analyze. Spicy honey on its own was a great idea, but we didn't let that excitement stop us from stepping back and really vetting before we committed to anything. So now we're at day 10, and we don't have a name. And we've got two hours to pick a name. We had already named our honey Bee's Knees Spicy Honey, which was so obvious and on the nose, there was no debate about that. But when it came time to name our company, we were at a complete standstill. We couldn't settle on something, but we were a third of the way through our 30-day challenge. We hadn't bought a domain, we hadn't filed our LLC paperwork, we had no logo, we had no website. We needed to pick a name now. So we flooded a Google Doc with hundreds of ideas and spent two hours knocking them down, cutting and pasting, Frankensteining different ideas together. And we finally settled on Mixed Made, which we felt kind of combined the feeling of ethos of our company, that we wanted it to be a handmade product, and then also incorporated some of the whimsy of the spicy honey and playing around with flavors and concepts and ideas. Lesson three, action. And this is what I tell people all the time. Not doing something is so much more damaging than just doing something. Even if it turns out to be wrong, at least you've moved yourself forward. I think we all get stuck in this fear maybe of making the wrong move or is that the right decision? It doesn't matter. Do something and adjust to it afterwards. It's gonna work out fine. So I'm gonna fast forward a couple days through project testing, uh, design, SEO, why we were an LLC instead of an S Corp. There's a great story in here about meeting our first honey supplier who um, lived completely off the grid, dealt only in cash, and had a long prepared lecture about the government and mind control. <laughs> <laughs> we obviously went with a different supplier. <laughs> but what we learned by day 19 was good enough. Sometimes things just need to be good enough. And now, I wouldn't suggest living in that area between flying and failing. That's boring and not interesting, and no one should do that. 
But in the purpose of moving forward, good, just good, can be good enough. So fast forward, and this still stresses me out to talk about, but day 25, <laughs> and things are not going well. We completely underestimated our product cost. The first batch I made in the commercial kitchen, an absolute failure. And oh, I'm getting heart palpitations thinking about it. We forgot to order caps. And the bottles need to leave in five days. Make mistakes. If we had spent more time planning and organizing, would we have made those mistakes? No. If we had spent six months planning and organizing, would we be at that point mistake-free? Absolutely not. Mistakes get such a bad rap, but I really love a good mistake. Nothing is better for your growth and for your improvement than a bad, nasty mistake. The important thing is that you identify the source, find the solution, and fix it. And the strengthening that your company receives from that process is inc incredible. So day 29, the bottles have to go out tomorrow. And by a complete miracle, they're actually packed and ready to go. And the lesson here is plan B. And I hope if you take nothing else from the speech, you will listen to this because it is my motto in business and life. The secret to success is the graceful execution of plan B. <laughs> it's true. I don't want to admit how many times I've told myself that. But roadblocks are going to happen. And that's not the end of the road. There is always an alternate route. And nine times out of 10, plan B is way more dynamic than what plan A was going to be. So there it is. We got to day 30, launched our products, sent it all out. I'm just going to throw some numbers up here that we're just going to breeze by in the interest of time, but interpret those as you will. But the lesson here <laughs> <laughs> is do it. I get the question a lot, what would you say to someone who is considering starting their own business? And obviously in this room I'm preaching to the choir. But my advice is always do it. Know what you're getting yourself into, sure. It's not an easy decision. You sacrifice a lot, your social life, your salary, your sanity. But if that doesn't scare you, waiting two months or a year or a lifetime is not going to make it any easier. If you want to do it, do it. So I'm actually very happy to admit that uh, completely by coincidence, today is our second birthday. Thank you. <laughs> this feels like a very apropos way to celebrate. <laughs> um, but today is also the last day we are known as Mixed Made. We're shedding our company name, and lesson eight is take risks. My goal for myself is to never be the type of person that sits back and enjoys what I've done. I never want to take for granted my success to the point where I stop myself from improving and taking a risk. So yeah, changing our brand name <laughs> two years in, maybe not the smartest, but also at two years, it's now or never. When else are we going to have the chance? And I think in the momentary, hopefully, confusion while we switch from one brand name to the other, the reward of having a stronger, more stable brand in the future will definitely be worth the payoff. So, no more mix made. And actually this time, when it was time to name the company, that was the easiest part of the switch over. We just went right back to where the whole thing started, to Bushwick Kitchen. <laughs> Thank you very much.